Hi class, this is Matthew Darty from the University of St. Augustine. I'm going to be presenting to you the Diagnostic uh, Specificity Lecture. This is going to be a very brief lecture to help clarify a lot of um, commonly made mistakes and confusion students have when they take this course that I think if we can help straighten out will really help you a lot in the future, future coursework here such as uh, Mock Clinic, um, E1, uh, Therax 1 and 2. So I'm going to go over some things. You've already heard some of this before, but um, you're going to be hearing it again, and we're going to be applying this information uh, a little bit more in class. So this will, if you can get on board with this language, it'll really be to your benefit for this term and the remaining. Okay, your objectives are there for you. You can pause and uh, read these, but remember your objectives guide your studying. So these are the questions you should be able to answer um, verbally and out loud uh, to each other and uh, in preparation for your exam. So if you're solid on how you can answer these questions, you will do well on questions um, related to these topics. The first nomenclature I want to define is an examination step. So this is kind of the most basic building block of your physical exam. These are one of the 18 examination techniques that you actually perform with the patient in the clinic. Now, I want you to notice that the tail end of your 18 examination uh, steps are actually steps in which um, you, know, you may not be physically performing an assessment on the patient or, or a technique such as uh, the um, you know the evaluation it's when you really sit back uh, analyze the data and determine things like your tissue specific impairments and um, and all your other factors stage condition tissue reactivity etc so it's really only going to be about 15 examination techniques that you really perform hands-on the clinic and uh, and then you perform more of a mental uh, metacognition process and then your final step, your 18th examination uh, step, is really when you begin treating. That is your intervention. So this is a, a cohesive process. Uh, everything's related to one another. And the building block of that is the step or the actual examination techniques that you perform on the patient. OK, the finding is just the result of what you just did. So if you're performing an examination step, it's the result of that. If you're performing an examination test, which we'll discuss more in the next slide, it's the result of that. So let's say the step you were going to perform was this passive range of motion accessory. So you're doing passive range of motion accessory on a patient. All right. You're always looking for certain things. You're always looking for certain findings. You're looking for quantity, you're looking for quality, and you're looking for symptom behavior. So those are all findings, right? So Let's say your quantity, the finding was it was hypomobile, it didn't move enough. For quality, let's say there was a, uh, an end feel, and that end feel was a tight capsular end feel. Quality is really the quality of the resistance you feel, right? And so that's going to be your end feels. So exa the examination finding, just think result. All right, we have questions embedded in this. PowerPoint. So at this point, please pause the PowerPoint and answer these questions. Um, once you have done so thoroughly, um, you can go ahead and move on. Now, make sure you're writing these out so that you can turn them in in the following class period. Your professor uh, may dictate to you whether they would rather have them emailed to them, posted on the portal, or just have you bring the papers into class um, as a participation uh, point or credit. So please make sure you answer these and bring them into the following class period. Okay, an examination test is really a measure within its, a step. All right, so it's the measure you perform within an examination step, and this is also used to pick up those findings or results. You're looking for results. So uh, let's talk about one that I think we've discussed already in lab, and that is Tennell's test, so that tapping test over a nerve. So the purpose of Tennell's test is to either pick up a nerve irritation or to um, try to rate nerve regeneration. So the result, um, if it was a, you know, the nerve was irritated, we're using as a provocation test. Let's say we're doing it right over the carpal tunnel. We're tapping, performing Tennell's test. So this is an examination test. And let's say in 15 seconds, we get reproduction of paresthesia 
in the median nerve distribution. So our finding or our result would be reproduction of median nerve paresthesia in the hand at 15 seconds um, and the examination test that we used was Tenel's. What examination step does that test fall under? Well that's a special test. So here's your third question. Please answer this. Pause the PowerPoint and move on when you're ready. All right, so let's let's relate all three together because they are all related. Just think, all right? A step and then a test and then the finding. Now, not every step will really break down into a test, but remember a test falls within a step. So there's an intimate relationship between all these three and you need to be able to think about them all separately as separate entities and then be able to rate them together, right? Relate them, uh, connect the dots between those three uh, so that you can determine exactly what we're asking you for examinations. Um, you can determine exactly what that finding means and what step I chose to perform um, and how that relates to the clinical management of that patient. So you should be able to describe how these all three are related such as what I did in the previous slide. All right, another thing students struggle with is a tissue-specific impairment. In some of your other coursework, such as Therex, um, you will just discuss impairments sometimes, like uh, decreased range of motion, um, decreased strength, pain, right? Those are examples of impairments, but we're going to hold you to a much higher level of specificity so we can be very specific with our intervention and management strategy. So the first thing you need to do when you're trying to actually write out a TSI. Uh, and by the way, this is after you've finished your examination. You're looking back and trying to determine, all right, what exactly is wrong with this patient? Um, well, you know, wh what impairment is, and what findings are telling me something's wrong? You know, so, all right, what exactly is going on and what tissue is at fault? And name the tissue. So let's say you had some weakness. And let's say this weakness was with something like elbow flexion. All right, well, what could cause weakness for elbow flexion? Well, when I performed a manual muscle test, I found that the biceps was actually weak. So my tissue is the biceps, okay? My impairment is that it's weak. And then the third thing is, am I being specific? Is this as specific as I can be? No, I could say that this is a right long head of biceps muscle. You see what I mean? So take the tissue, take the impairment, and be as specific as you can. So you see some other examples below. Um, the first one in adhesion is, is really important because students often get confused. We don't know exactly where this adhesion is, so I just can name the direction in which I was able to detect that lesion or adhesion was present. So when I did an AP glide, I was able to um, get an adhesion end fill. Therefore, if I was looking at the glenohumeral joint, my TSI would be an AP or just posterior directed adhesion of the glenohumeral joint. Let's say I detected there was swelling within the MCP joint. Well, my tissue is swelling, right? Swelling within the joint is really the impairment of effusion. And am I being specific? Well, it's an MCP joint effusion. And let's say you only had data that was positive for that second MCP joint, then you would definitely need to be that specific and say second MCP joint effusion. All right, so question number four, please answer this before moving on. Okay, lastly, the topic of tissue reactivity. Tissue reactivity is very different from the step that you're performing um, that helps you really detect a problem. This is, all right, I already have my tissue-specific impairment. I need to look at how reactive it is, and specifically, how reactive is it to maximal stress, and I really want to favor passive stresses, things that I can do with my own hands so that I can trust the findings or the results. This information is really valuable because it'll help me decide how aggressive I can be uh, with my intervention, you know, um, how I should better manage this patient's condition. This is very valuable. So I'm going to look at my tissue reactivity, combine it with what exactly is the nature of the impairment or of the TSI, what is my stage of condition, 
my subject reactivity, and what is my patient's functional goal. I look at all those five factors together to determine my intervention and my management. So choose the examination step that best fits this definition. Remember, there's no rules to this process. Students like to make lists and charts, and I think that's a great studying habit. However, you should not try to learn the concept of tissue reactivity by memorizing charts because there are no specific rules. For example, I've seen charts that students made that say, all right, if it's always, let's say, a muscular problem, your tissue reactivity is going to be best determined by an MLT. Well, that's very, very, very much depends on the nature of that muscular impairment. Sometimes it may or may not be appropriate. For example, that may be appropriate for a weak muscle, but that would be very inappropriate to perform on a partially torn muscle or tendon. All right, so you really have to work through this with critical thinking and clinical application. So look at the findings you have or you're provided and keep going back to that definition of the response of the tissue to maximal passive stress and see if it fits. If it doesn't fit, look to the next best step that would fit and would actually stress that tissue. So here's your final question. Please pause and answer this and bring it in the following class period. Um, thank you very much for listening to this lecture. I hope you got a lot out of it. I hope you were an active participant and um, we will see you in class if you are on other campuses. Um, thank you very much for listening and best of luck in this curriculum. We are here to help.